In section seven of chapter four, we're going to be tying together our understanding of factoring, quadratic formula, completing the square, all that to find x-intercepts, along with some other key aspects and characteristics of parabolas in order to graph quadratics that are written in standard form. So here's an example. I have the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. That's a quadratic because the highest power of x is x to the second power. It's going to make a parabola. I've already graphed it for you, but on your problems, they will not be graphed ahead of time. You're going to find these characteristics, these traits, and then graph the parabola based on them. I'm going to do two examples. The first one here, I already have the graph for us, so I can reference the information as I find it. All right, first thing we're going to find is called the axis of symmetry, which I often abbreviate as AOS, axis of symmetry. That is the location on the parabola that, cur that cuts it straight in half because parabolas, like butterflies, are the same on the left and right. They're symmetric across this dotted line, which is called the axis of symmetry. To find the axis of symmetry, surprise, surprise, it comes from the quadratic formula. The way we find it is with the equation x equals negative b over 2a. It's the first portion of the quadratic formula. So in this problem, my b value is 4, my a value is 2, therefore it's going to be x equals negative 4 over 2 times 2, which is negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. This is my axis of symmetry, it's at x equals negative 1, matches my graph that I have thus far. I went left 1, draw a vertical dotted line, matches with the, the calculation I just did. <clears throat> The next characteristic or trait that's really important is the vertex. The vertex is either the top or bottom of the parabola, depending if it's a U shape or an upside down U. It is that dot that forms the tip, the center. Now the way that I show you how to find it looks complicated, but it's actually really easy. It's going to be a coordinate. The x value of the coordinate is the negative b over 2a. It comes straight from the axis of symmetry. Makes sense. The axis of symmetry cuts the function in half. The vertex is in the middle. So it makes sense that the axis of symmetry and the vertex have to hit each other. But then the y value is f of negative b over 2a. What that means is you're going to take the value of the x for your vertex and plug it back into the original equation to find the y value. So I'm going to take that negative 1 and plug it back into the function f. So f of negative 1 is going to be 2 times the quantity negative 1 quantity squared plus 4 times the quantity of negative 1 minus 6. That's going to be equal to 2 minus 4 minus 6, which is equal to 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. So my coordinate is negative 1 comma negative 8. That is the location of the vertex. Left 1 down 8. And that takes me right here, which matches with the graph. Third thing, this is the easiest one to find. It is the y-intercept. It's where the graph is going to hit on the y-axis. Now to find the x-axis, the x-intercepts, we set the y value equal to zero. If you want to find the y-intercepts, you set the x values equal to zero. Well, if you do that, this would turn to zero. This would turn to zero. All you're left with is the last term. That's why the y-intercept is always whatever the last term is when written in standard form. It's just negative 6, which is why it hits here at negative 6. And then lastly, we've got to find the x-intercepts. This is what this entire chapter has been building on. It's building on the idea of finding x-intercepts. 
We have the quadratic function 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. You can solve it in any way you want. Area model, factoring, you could do completing the square, or you could just always use the quadratic formula. Whatever floats your boat, whatever technique you want, I'm not going to tell you which one to use. I'm going to do the area model and factoring. So that's 0 equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. I can factor out a 2. It's 2 times the quantity x squared plus 2x minus 3. I'm going to factor that, and I would get 2 times x uh, plus 3 times x minus 1. That'll be true when x plus 3 equals 0. Or when x, not plus 1, x minus 1 is equal to 0. I'd solve x plus 3 equals 0 by subtracting 3 to both sides and getting x is equal to negative 3. I solve the other one by adding 1 to the other side and getting x equals 1. These are my two x-intercepts. At x equals negative 3 and positive 1. But what do you know? That's where my graph hits the x-axis. The only difference between this problem and the last one, the last one I gave you the graph ahead of time, this one we're going to create the graph. So we're still going to find those four characteristics, those four traits. We are still going to plot them on an x, y axis. The only difference is at the very end we connect those with a line to create a parabola. So function g, first I'm going to find the axis symmetry. Axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a, so that is negative negative 6 over 2 times 3. That'll be 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. Here is my axis of symmetry, positive 1. So I'm going to go right 1, draw a vertical dotted line. I don't know where the vertex is, but I know it's going to be somewhere on this dotted line. Next, got to find the vertex. I take that positive 1 and I plug it into the function. g of 1 is going to equal... 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 minus 9. That's going to be equal to 3 minus 6 minus 9. 3 minus 6 is negative 5. Negative 5 minus 9 is negative 14. Did I do that right? Negative 3. No, negative 12. I apologize. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. There we go. There is my x value for, or sorry, my y value for the coordinate for the vertex. So the vertex is 1 comma negative 12. My graph only goes down to 10. I could draw a dot off my graph, which is fine. Or I can change the scale to go by jumps of 2. So this is going to be 20, sorry, negative 20. This will be positive 20. This is still 10 and negative 10, however. <clears throat> so I'm going to go right 1, and I'm going to go down 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12 is right here. So there's my vertex with my altered scale. Next, I need to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is y equals, it's just the negative 9. So go down, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 is right here. Next, I'm going to find the x-intercept. Use whatever technique you want. But I notice a 3 could be factored out of that and get x squared minus 2x minus 3. And that factors into 3 times x minus 3 times x plus 1. That'll give me x-intercepts when x minus 3 equals 0 or when x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means x-intercepts are going to be at 3 and negative 1. So I'm going to go right 3, and I'm going to go left 1. These are all the dots that we have. Now we make a parabola that goes through them all. I am done graphing this quadratic.